Whoa, hello, welcome back. My most recent video on my dreadnought diorama, which is not on my shelf, did really, 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 really well. Really, really well. <laughs> so I thought I would capitalize on that and finish off another diorama that I've been working on for a while. I'm not gonna mess around and talk too much about it without showing you it. So what I'm gonna do is give you a little bit of a montage of the months of work on and off, not consistent, that I've done producing this diorama and then show it off to you at the end and you can let me know what you think. So, let's get started. This model had a range of strange kind of inspirations. I discovered that this is a craft shop quite close to where I live and some of the stuff on the shelves just made me want to make something. And then this, that's on screen now, came from the Canis Rex box, which produced the knight, which is in my other videos. The character seat, the throne mechanicum, and this guy here were character pieces from within the set, and I didn't use them, but it felt like a waste not to. So I put them together into this weird little greebly looking thing that I intended to turn into a Tomb of the Un Unknown Pilot or Tomb of the Unknown Soldier type thing. And what I did was gather up other pieces from throughout the set that weren't used, cut them up, destroy them essentially, break them into pieces, and then use them to create scenery. And the idea behind the scenery was that this throne, the throne mechanicum was mounted on top of a hill which I made out of broken pieces of this little easel that became the base. Those broken pieces of the knight are laid around as if the knight house that the two characters belong to has venerated the, the corpse or the dead body or even just the uniform of one of their former pilots who was downed in battle and surrounded him with the equipment from Down Knight's Throne all over the house's history, which is why they're all destroyed and, and rotten. And I, I, because I, I'd been to the, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington Cemetery in Washington DC, and the idea is so interesting to me, and there doesn't seem to be much of a 40K representation of that. So I thought, what if I had, um, with these spare parts that I had, I try to make, challenge myself to make a diorama that reflects the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier theme, but in a 40k setting. And I, I thought that would be quite cool. So once I kind of had the idea where the throne would sit on top of the hill and the the theme of it, which you'll see later on, was coming into my mind, I decided to get some stones and mount a little plinth or like a, a natural staircase that led up to the hill where they'd mounted this. And I, I primed the whole thing, created the scenery out of um, modeling stones and then glued everything in place because I wanted to really commit to this because it was a challenge. I didn't want to mess around with positioning or anything. I just put things down as and when they appeared. And then what I wanted to do was have it all sitting on a shoreline, which was an extra challenge again. In my Redemptor Dreadnought series, you'll see that I managed to create water for a lake out of a plastic bag, which sounded completely bonkers at the time and probably still does, but you can mimic water flowing and crashing like waves quite easy with a plastic bag probably more easily than you can with um resin and what i did just part of this challenge was to try and recreate that because it felt like a bit of a fluke at the time and while you'll see later on i do think i made some mistakes the effect is still pretty good so what i did was cut the bag to shape this leftover plastic bag that i had and then just I essentially painted and painted and painted it until it started to look like water and then you'll see the effects at the end. But yeah, it just required a massive amount of PVA glue and paint and just repetition and repetition and repetition. And with it stuck in place or with it at least getting started to get stuck in place, it gave me a chance to work on the part that I really like, which is picking those random little spots for foliage to grow out from under rocks or around the throne or around the ground and things. And I went a bit mad with it in the end, but I think it looks natural and it looks good. It's kind of like that sand dune type scenery that you would get. And then basically I went on to paint the throne once I'd primed it. I was quite excited to see what I would do with the throne because I'd built the basic shape out of totally random stuff from the Canis Rex box. It was left over after I built a custom knight. And really, it was just a matter of trying to make it look full of greeblies and sort of weird MacGuffin bits while still being convincing. Um, and I actually really like how the thing itself turned out. It is odd looking enough mechanically that it kind of doesn't have any specifics, but it looks like it all has a specific purpose, if you know what I mean. And yeah, it, 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 it does serve a purpose and it looks the part whenever it's done. But then 
Once I'd finished this part, I left a massive gap of about three or four months where I didn't work on it. But when I came back recently, I decided it was time to paint up the weapons to make them look more convincing. So I painted them silver, then I over painted them with Typhus Corrosion again, so they had almost like a new undercoat of rust. And then over the top of that, I repainted some metallics and some orange as well, some Troll Slayer or Dragon Slayer orange, sorry. Um, to then create the effect of rust in layers and layers with some shining bits of metal through as if the, the sea breeze and the salt had just worn away these weapons that were from ancestral knights that had just been sitting for maybe even hundreds of years. And to motivate myself to continue the whole thing, I decided to PVA the back end of the base and start filling out the foliage, which again is something I really enjoy doing now, using just flock from a, from a craft shop. It's, it's really straightforward, we're using flock and I left a big backspace at, the, at the, the rear of the model so that yes it would it would be cohesive and would cover up any wood and stuff like that but it would also not subtract from the front end. And then I used more flock and some PVA to create a path along the front which you'll see will lay out the main idea of this diorama later on. And the, the idea is that this throne sits on top of a hill where the house is situated, the night house is situated, whatever planet that happens to be on. And before going out on patrol or on battle or on deployment, other knights of the house that are still living will go to this throne and pay tribute to it to respect the, the past efforts of knights of the house who've gone before. And what I wanted to do was show a knight who's currently on his way to be deployed, returning from visiting the throne seeing the throne on top of the hill. So yeah, laying out a nice path that had been trodden and trodden and trodden by hundreds of, of members of this night house over the years um, I was reflected by shading it, basically just shading the stones. And I went over the shade a few times, especially after I'd, I'd glued the visiting night down. But then while I was waiting for all that to dry, I went back to the water side and undercoated it. So the more you undercoat the bag that you've glued down, the more it sticks and forms into a solid shape, which you can then work with later on. So I wanted to make sure that this was pinned down nice and firmly with some really oily old Citadel paint. So just going over and over and over it with black until it started to sit allowed me to work on other things while that dried so that I could come back to it and add the water layers. But then while that dried, I then chose to work on the armor of the visiting knight. I just wanted two contrasting colors, basically. I didn't want them both to be wearing the same livery because it just felt like it was too much. There aren't a lot of colors going on in this entire scene, so I introduced a little bit of red and a little bit of blue just to create some highlights. Um, and then I took the opportunity while he was drying to trim the edge of the water so that it sat flush with the base of the model. Um, it still wasn't fully hardened yet, so it was quite hard to cut this. But what I did to try and toughen up the edge was use some green stuff, uh, liquid green stuff, just to pin down and create a bit of cohesion between the waterline in inverted commas and the edge of the base itself. And I actually really, really like working with liquid green stuff at the minute because it just allows you to create a little bit of smoothness between things. And while again, I waited for that time to set, I glued the visiting knight in position next to the throne which was also glued in by this point and you can kind of see there that the two armor colors just reflect the different knights that these guys pilot and it just brings an extra little bit of, of tone to the scene that's not green or sand colored or rust colored um, and then with the green stuff dried I moved on again to just undercoat the whole thing again just to let that extra layer of hardness and to, to bring that real dark dingy 40k color to the water with the throne glued in place, I decided it was time to add some detail because it was kind of fixed down. Um, and I added some dual effect paints to the venerated knight's armor, just to kind of look that maybe this wasn't the armor that the, the body wore when it was a, an active knight pilot, but it was more decorated and bejeweled or, or, or even properly painted to reflect this venerated quality of him. And then I just used more and more metallic paint to make him shine as if you know, maybe the sun had caught him while he was sitting in his throne for eternity on the edge of this rock. And with his armor mostly finished, I then finally moved on to color the water. Now I found that before green, blue and dark shades worked best to create the color in the water, when it comes to 
adding depth to the waves. So obviously there's some crests, there's some troughs there. So adding shade to really bring the darkness into the troughs with the undertone of the green gives you a really nice base watercolor, which maybe doesn't look the part there just yet. But when you start to add blue and more layers of green, especially with dry brushing on those crests, you get a gradient that looks like water that's rising up in layers. And you can actually see the Redemptive Dreadnought in the background there that I use as reference. The watercolor even there in the depth of field is way more defined than I managed to get with this model, but I think I was just less patient to be honest. But it still, it does look like water in the end. And you can see here as the blue starts to get added in, the tops of those waves start to look a lot more good. And originally in the Redemptive Dreadnought, I used really, really, really heavy coating of white dry brushing paint, specific dry brushing paint. But this time I wanted to use the snow technical paint that my brother bought me years ago. And initially, as you can see here, the, the sea foam worked really, really well. And it worked really, really well at this point as well. But I think in the end, I kind of just got a bit too carried away with it because the effect kind of got lost um, as it went on. And it went from looking like waves to just looking far too foamy and, and ridiculous. But I am still happy. It does still look like waves. It just looks a little bit less convincing than it did had I just left it alone. But the, you can really see it starting to lose its effect once I start adding the spray that's run up the side of one of the weapons. But I'm still I'm still happy with this, and I can you know the effects that I got from this I can learn from and I can use again because ultimately this is just a small challenge project. And I'm not too concerned with the overall outcome. And as with any project really, when I'm finished, I just like to go over and cover some of the major details that are gonna stand out the most. Um, off screen, I did some more rust effects and a little bit more detailing on the armor and the metallics of the whole thing, as well as the purity seals as well. And I'm really excited to actually see what you guys think of the whole thing. Hopefully someday I'll be able to get a camera that handles the up close a little bit better. But for now, hopefully this is enough of a view of the diorama to let you know what it's like in flesh. Let me know what you think of it. And before I let you sit with it alone, let me know if you can spot the strange little Squidmore inspired surprise that I've hidden in there for you. See you soon.